Welcome back to daytime. We're going to talk about Girl Guides. And so with you right now, Laura Riggs, a guider with Girl Guides Canada, and Megan Jones, girl member with the Girls Girl Guides Canada as well. That's a mouthful that right there. Mouthful, yeah. So <laughs> one of you is a guider, that would be you, and one is a girl member. What would be the difference between the two? So the guider means that I'm somewhat of a leader. So I help with um, identifying programming, um, and then I kind of lead the meetings more or less. Um, but with age groups such as Megan's, uh, so Megan is in Rangers, um, they take a lot of the reins themselves actually, and they kind of uh, identify their own priorities when it comes to their meetings. Y you know, sometimes I think we forget what the Girl Guides is about and what they do. And so all we kind of know is the cookies at the door, right? That's totally. sort of what we think. But you know, without, we could talk about it for hours, I'm sure. Let's talk about what Girl Guides do in general, especially for girls. Great. Uh, so we're an organization um, across the country that uh, basically focuses on empowering uh, girls to um, reach their full potential. It covers ages actually from five all the way up to adult members like myself. Um, and, uh, and really we try to focus programming um, that is really attentive to girls' needs that responds to challenges that they see on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, International Day of the Girl, um, and of course we're uh, recognizing challenges worldwide that girls face, um, but also here in Canada, Girl Guides of Canada has undertaken a uh, survey and a study yes. um, to really feel out uh, what challenges are encountered by our girls here in Canada. And did you have some feedback from that? From, from that particular survey? Sure, yeah. Uh, it was quite staggering, but also something that um, myself as a guider and I'm sure Megan uh, as a girl uh, see on a day-to-day -day basis, it really revealed that two out of three girls um, feel uh, that there are pressures uh, that basically suggest what it should be to be a girl and there are unrealistic pressures that they feel that they must live up to, whether it be their appearance or their identities. Wow. Um, and that really has a negative uh, effect on their self-esteem often. So well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit, um, sure. Megan. How, what's it like for you? How long have you been in the Girl Guides? What have you, what have you found? How has it impacted your life? Uh, sure. I've been in Girl Guides since the earliest branch, which is Sparks. And to me, I have to say that it's more of a community than it is like any club or extracurricular. And um, it's really like it's it's about a lot more than just the cookies. Yes, and, I know. And, and, I, the and I didn't mean to say that like that, oh, but no, I think a course. lot of us are like, yay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because we love those cookies. Please but buy them. Yeah, oh, I don't think you'll have a problem there. <laughs> but there's so much more yeah. involved with you know just the growing through the guides, right? Yeah, it's like growing up with it. It teaches you a lot. Um, it's, there's a lot of programs that Girl Guides offer that teach a lot about things that I definitely think should be talked about more, things like um, mental health and self-esteem. They have a lot of programs on those types of things. Yeah. And they, it also is like such a strong community that you talk a lot about your community and what problems are in your community and how maybe you could drive change to help those things. And it also talks about things on a global aspect too. And you, you can do like, the, we do a lot of community service projects and different service projects to help people. Um, it's changed a lot over the years because I think eons ago, and you know, I'm dating myself here, it was about, you know, how to, pop, how to sew and how to cook. Yeah, and, sure, and that was yeah. okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more now because, you know, the boundaries, you know, the sky's the limit now. There's we clearly know that girls can do pretty much anything the boys can do. So it's grown, hasn't it? It's changed. Of course, yeah. And we've been developing programming that really responds to um, gaps when it comes to girls in Canada and making sure that they are experiencing um, other areas and programming that they might not necessarily have access to. So, for example, um, we're really focused on STEM, so getting girls involved with coding, with science, technology, engineering. Um, uh, so, there's really one of the things I really like about Girl Guides of Canada is no matter what the subject matter, there's a badge for that. So, it really opens girls nice. to um, a variety of different topics. I know that when I read the notes yesterday, you were saying it's really important to talk about how Girl Guides are helping girls feel empowered. How are we doing that? Uh, well, by putting girls first. So girls are really at the helm of our programming and the way we develop our programming. Um, so for example, as I mentioned, um, issues when it comes to self-esteem, we actually have programming for that. Um, so we have a program called BU, which is a challenge that helps girls focus on self-esteem, um, on questioning uh, media images, uh, mm -hmm. and really caring for ourselves and one another. So no matter the subject, uh, there's a way that Girl Guides responds to it. And how, wh what was it like for you? How did you get involved in the Girl Guides? Uh, so I actually came up through Girl Guides in uh, a small town in Newfoundland. 
land. Okay. Um, but I, I had really great leaders um, that really inspired me. So because of that, I stuck with it. Um, and I stayed in guides all the way until I was 14. And then when I moved to Ottawa, I found myself back in the organization again, because not only for girls, but also for adult members, it's a, it's a really great organization to connect and really give back to your community. So someone who's in the Girl Guides now can stay for a really long time, and it turns into something that you can do for a lifetime, but not necessarily full time. You can incorporate into your other life, you know, as perhaps a parent or having another job? Absolutely. I mean, I have a regular job. Um, so this is really a volunteer initiative of mine. It's a passion of mine. Um, but it's also a network of my closest friends as well. Um, so most of my uh, my close friends in this area I've met through guiding. Um, so it's barely been rewarding on, uh, on a number of levels for me. And so does it work as in there's an Ottawa chapter or is it different communities? How does it work if you want to join? Someone at home think, I think I want my daughter in there. So if you're interested in joining, you can check out uh, girlguides.ca and it'll actually locate you um, with different units or branches within your community. Uh, so we're actually 12th Ottawa guides which means we're uh, branched out of Sandy Hill um, and we're kind of unique in the sense that we're a rainbow unit so we go from Sparks all the way to Rangers which is Megan's age group nice. so ages 5 all the way to 17 um, so it's uh, it's a really huge unit I think we're one of the biggest in Canada actually. And so what's next after Rangers for you? Um, well I'm gonna try and see if I can get into leadering. Good for you! Yeah at certain ages I don't know about their university. <laughs> yeah no those two things are tough but clearly there's always a spot for yeah. for young women in the girl guides and and you can always come back to it when there's a little bit more time on your hands. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your stories, ladies. I think that you've sparked a lot of people at home to re rethink about the Girl Guides and what perhaps they, the misconceptions they may or may not have, have had about it. Absolutely. But we still do love those cookies. Oh, yeah. totally. totally. Of course. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Thank you so much. All the best to you. Thanks. All right, we're going to take a quick break right now. And when we come back, as we just talked about schooling a little bit, what about schooling and school debt? We're going to talk about that and see if we can find some solutions right after the break. Stay with us. You're watching Daytime on Rogers TV.